In this video, we're going to take a look at differentiating sine x and cos x from first principles. Now, differentiation from first principles isn't something new. We did cover this in the first year of materials, so if you need a bit of a recap, do check out that previous video. So to be with here, let's take a look at showing um, from first principles here that the derivative of sine x is cos x. Now, you can see here we're given a bit more information at the bottom, so we're told that you may assume the formula for sine a plus or minus b without proof. So that means you can just use the formula. You don't need to prove anything for that. And for this part here, we're told the behavior as h tends to zero of these two other limits here. So sine h over h tends to one and cos h minus one over h tends to zero, okay? And you'll see why we need those in a moment. So to begin with here, let's just recall the formula for different intervals. So remember this is in your formula, but you don't have to worry about memorizing this. So f prime of x here, our derivative, that's equal to the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, okay? So in this case, f of x, our original function will be sine x, that's what we're gonna differentiate. So f of x here is sine x, and then in that case, f of x plus h, that will be sine of x plus h. Okay, so sine of x plus h there. So that's everything we need to get started here. So let's start applying that now to our formula here for differentiation from first principles. So f prime of x here, that's gonna be equal then to the limit as h tends to zero. So the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h, so that's gonna be sine of x plus h. So sine of x plus h minus f of x, where f of x is sine x, so minus sine x, and then we divide all of this here by h, okay? So where do we go from here now? Well, what I've got here now is sine of x plus h, and we've got sine of a plus or minus b here, so that's how we're gonna to need to use this here now, okay? Now do remember the formula here, the compound angle formula, that is given in the formula, but you don't have to worry about memorizing that. Okay, so let's just recall um, or check our formula book here for sine of a plus b. So for sine of a plus b here, just using the formula book, we're gonna get sine a cos b, so sine a cos b, and then we're gonna add cos a sine b, so plus cos a sine b, okay? Now obviously in our case, we're gonna replace a and b here with x and h, okay? We're gonna get sine x cos h plus cos x sine h, okay? So putting that together then, what we can see here is the limit as h tends to zero of sine x plus h, that would be sine x cos h, so sine x cos h. We then got cos a sine b, so that would be cos x sine h, okay? So plus cos x sine h. Okay, and then don't forget the minus sine x here. So minus sine x, and this is all over h. Okay, so all over h. So where do we go from here now? Well, I think this is probably the trickiest part here to kind of figure where we go from here, and what we need to do now is try and make use of these limits here. So we know that as h tends to zero, sine h over h tends to one, and cos h minus one over h tends to zero. So I need to try and rearrange and get something of this form here. Okay, so that when we then take the limit as h tends to zero, we can cancel essentially these out or get this behavior here, okay? So what I'm gonna do then is take my numerator here and try and rearrange this so that I can start factoring out, um, whether that be sine x here, cos x for example, but try and factorize so that we can get these two expressions here. Now what I notice straight away, so I just put the limit here as h tends to zero, and what I notice is I have a sine x here. I also have this minus sine x. So I'm gonna put those together because what I'm then gonna do is factor the sine x out. So I'm gonna get sine x cos h, sine x cos h minus sine x. I've then also got plus cos x sine h. Okay, so plus cos x sine h. Now if you was confident or straight away, you could kind of skip this step here. Um, don't think that is still all over h. 
you could essentially skip this step here and go straight into the factorization. But I do want to show all the steps here and how we do this differentiation from first principles. So now that we said now, I'm going to factor the sine x out here. So I get the limit as h tends to 0. The limit as h tends to 0. Back to the sine x out. I get sine x here in front. And what I'm going to get then is cos h minus 1. If we factor the sine x out, then we're going to get cos h minus 1. Cos h minus 1. We then got cos x sine h. Okay, so plus cos x sine h. So we'll leave that for now. Okay, so cos x sine h. Again, this is still all over h here. Now from here, this is looking promising because what I've got then is cos h minus 1. They've got a cos h minus 1 here, but that's over h. So what I'm going to do now is apply what we call linearity here. So when we're taking the limit here of a sum like this, I can then apply linearity and I can write this then as the sum of two individual limits. Okay. So we've got the limit of a sum. I'm going to change that now to be the sum of the limits. Okay, so that's now going to be the limit as h tends to 0. Remember, we're looking to get this cos h minus 1 just over h. So we're going to get sine x. So sine x cos h minus 1 all over h. Okay, so that's the first part. What we now have is cos x sine h also over h. Okay, so we now need the second limit here plus the limit as h tends to 0 of cos x sine h over h. So cos x sine h all over h. Okay. So now we're going to apply linearity one more time here. So what I can do now is factor this sine x out in front of the limit. Okay. And we can do that here. So what I'm going to get then is um, sine x times the limit here as h tends to 0. The limit as h tends to 0 of cos h minus 1 over h. And that's going to give us this expression here, which is exactly what we need. OK, so I'm going to get cos h minus 1 all over h, Okay, which is what we needed. We then got the second limit here. So now we need to think about what we're going to factor out here. Now what we're looking for is sine h over h. So what that tells us then is we need to factor this cos x out in front of the limit. We're going to get plus cos x plus cos x um, times the limit as h tends to 0 of sine h sine h over h there. Okay. So all that's left to do here now is just consider the behavior of the limits here. So as h tends to 0 what happens to these two parts here? Well, we know that cos h minus 1 over h tends to 0. So if I do it underneath here as h tends to 0, what we can see then, if I just do it in a different pen color to finish with, we can see then that we get sine x times 0. Cos h minus 1 over h tends to 0. OK, so essentially I'm just doing sine x times 0. This dot here just representing the multiplication because obviously I've got sine x. So just not to confuse anyone, I'm using the dot here to represent multiplication. Then we get plus cos x times, so the limit here is h tends to 0 of sine h over h. We know that tends to 1. So I get cos x times 1. Well, sine x times 0 is 0. Cos x times 1 is just simply cos x, okay, as required, okay. And there we have it. So that's our solution there to uh, question one. And that's how we show from first principles that the derivative of sine x is cos x. And now let's take a look how we show from first principles that the derivative of cos x is minus sine x. So to begin with, let's just recall the definition here or the formula for differentiation from first principles. So we're going to get f prime of x here. That's equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, do remember that is given in the formula, but you don't have to worry about memorizing that. So in this case, then what would f of x be? What would f of x be here? Well, that's our original function. So that's going to be cos x, so cos x there. So what's f of x plus h here? So f of x plus h, in this case, will be cos of x plus h. 
So cos of x plus h there. Okay, so that's everything we need to get started then. Let's pull that note into our formula here for differentiation from first principles. So we've got f prime of x here is going to be equal to the limit as h tends to zero. So I've got f of x plus h, so that's going to be cos of x plus h. So cos of x plus h minus f of x, that's minus cos x, minus cos x, and this is all going to be over h. Okay. Now straight away we arrive at the same problem as what we got for the last question, okay, where we now need to use this formula here of cos a plus b. Okay, obviously we're just changing a and b then to be x and h. So again, we just need to take a look at the formula book here. This formula is given in the formula book, you don't have to worry about memorizing this either. So if I just recall this from the formula book, obviously I'm just going to straight away replace a and b here with x and h just to save a little bit of time. So cos of x plus h here from the formula book, that's going to be given as cos x cos h, or cos x cos h minus sine x sine h. So minus sine x sine h. Okay. So let's put that into our formula here for differentiation from first principles. We've got the limit as h tends to zero. So cos of x plus h would be this right hand side here. So cos x, cos x cos h minus sine x sine h. And don't forget the uh, minus cos x still left in the numerator here. So minus cos x. And that's all over h. Okay. Now from here, just like we did with the previous example where we was um, differentiating from first principles sine x, I want to start grouping this here so that I can then factorize and obtain these expressions here. Okay, and then we can then consider the behavior of h um, or the behavior of these expressions as h tends to zero. So to start with here, I'm going to take this minus cos x and group that with cos x cos h. Okay, so that we can then factor the cos x out. I'm going to get the limit here. H tends to zero. That's going to be cos x cos h. Cos x cos h minus cos x. And don't forget the minus sine x sine h. Okay, this will all be over h. So now what I want to do is start doing the factorization here. So I've got cos x, cos h minus cos x, so I can factor a cos x out here. I'm going to get the limit as h tends to zero. So factoring the cos x out, we get cos x um, cos h minus one. Okay, don't forget the minus sine x sine h minus sine x sine h and that's all over h there, okay? Now from here, what I wanna do is start applying linearity, okay? So I'm taking the limit here of a sum. So obviously this is a difference here in the numerator, but don't forget I could write this as the sum. So that would be cos x cos h minus one plus minus sine x sine h, okay? So we can still apply linearity here, even though it is an, a minus here, minus sine x sine h. So writing this has two individual limits, get the limit as h tends to zero. That's going to be cos x cos h minus one all over h. So cos x cos h minus one all over h. And then we um, subtract the limit here. So minus the limit as h tends to zero of sine x sine h over h. Okay, so sine x sine h all over h, okay? What I'm gonna do here now is apply linearity one more time. Remember what we can do is we can factor out the cos x here, put that in front of the limit and multiply that, and we can do the same here with a sine x, okay? And what that's gonna do then is leave me with these two expressions that we need. So I'm gonna get sine h over h once I factor the sine x out here, and we're gonna get cos h minus one over h when I factor the cos x out. So we're gonna get cos x times the limit as h tends to zero of cos h minus one over h. So cos h minus one 
all over h, which is exactly what we need there, so that's good. Do the same here with this limit now, back to the sine x out in front, so minus sine x, minus sine x times the limit as h tends to 0 of sine h over h. Sine h over h there. Okay, so all that's left to consider here now is what happens as h tends to 0. So as h tends to 0, we can see that sine h over h tends to 1. So this part here tends to 1, and cos h minus 1 over h tends to 0. So therefore, as h tends to 0, let's just do this now in a different pen color here. What I'm going to get then, do that over here. I'm going to get cos x times 0. This part here tends to 0. So we get cos x times 0 minus sine x, so minus sine x. And remember this part here tends to 1. Okay, so minus sine x times 1. Simplify this here, cos x times 0 is 0, minus sine x times 1 would give me minus sine x there. Okay, that's equal to minus sine x as required there. And there we have it, so that's how we differentiate sine x and cos x from first principles. You can apply this for tan x. Um, I'm not going to show that in this video, but do um, have a go at that. If you feel like you could attempt that, see if you can differentiate tan x from first principles. Okay, but there we have it. So that brings the end of this video on differentiating sine x and cos x from first principles. In the next video, we're going to take a look at differentiating exponentials and um, the natural logarithm.